I'm Johnny Scoville, and this is Chase the Heat. Good morning. Uh, filming from Scoville Bird Sanctuary here in Tucson, Arizona. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Uh, got a really cool... Hey, listen, you may notice I'm wearing a, a lid today. I don't want to have skin cancer, man, and I'm bald, and the sun is just always beating on me, and since I don't really think about, uh, like, sunscreen, this is better than sunscreen, so I'm maybe wearing a lid from now on. Uh, and this one's kind of Australian, so it fits. Uh, today, I'm reviewing a sauce from K. John's. It's kind of a cool one. Sancto Scorpio. Now, the second you say the sauce, you want to kind of add an accent to it. Sancto Scorpio. I don't know why. Maybe it's just me. Uh, but let me give you the ingredients of the sauce. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it, and we're going to get into the review. It's vinegar, Trinidad scorpion chilies, sugar, salt, granulated garlic, lemon extract. And I've read lemon in a million different uh, ingredient lists. I mean, lemon juice, lemon peel. I don't think I've ever read lemon extract. So that's pretty cool. And xanthan gum as a thickener. But listen to this. Um, a portion of the bottle sales of every one of these bottles, Sancto Scorpio, and there's the label. Okay, a portion uh, of the bottle sales help to fund research and education at the Chili Pepper Institute, where spiciness is a religion. Uh, the heat in this sauce comes from the scorpion pepper, a super hot chili from, the Trin from Trinidad, tested by Dr. Paul W. Bosland from New Mexico State University, Los Cruces, New Mexico. The Institute is the foremost authority on chili peppers and the only scientific research organization conducting replicated trials uh, to accurately test super hot varieties. There you have it. Um, it's not a real thick sauce. I'm looking forward to trying this, people. So uh, this morning I was on the, uh, the lifeboat. Uh, I'm on, I don't know if you guys know this. I'm on the lifeboat a lot on, mo on the morning show. So if you want to go over and check that out, I never mention that. Because it always sneaks up on me in the morning. It's like, hey, you want to be on the show? I'm like, okay, I'll do it. So this morning I was on the show and somebody brought up uh, kilts. Uh, Jen brought up Cobb, I think, brought up kilts. And man, I don't know what happened to me. I need a kilt. All of a sudden, I have to have one. I have to, I have, to have one. I want to play guitar with a kilt. Um... I really do. I, I don't know if I want a red one or a green one, but I have to have one. I was sitting there. This is terrible. I was I, we were in the live stream, and there's cameras on all three of us, you know. So the three of us are in the live stream, and Spanx is talking, Tommy's talking. I'm googling kilts. I don't know what it is. It's real. I don't know how to explain it. I have to have one all of a sudden. So I'm on the in the market for a, a kilt. Uh, here we go, people. One more time. Here's the. Uh, I don't know if you can see the consistency of it. Ooh. It's beautiful. The vinegar is like the vehicle that's bringing all of this to you. So we get the vinegar is like the backdrop, all right? And you got in it, you have the peppers for sure. Pick up garlic, heavy garlic. And that's really it. Uh, I'm not getting any of the uh, lemon, obviously, in the aroma. All right, here's the pour of Sancto Scorpio, people. Ooh, kind of chunky. I like that. All right. So from uh, K. John's, I don't know if this is. K. Johns, this is Sancto Scorpio. I'm Johnny Scoville. And this is Chase D. Hey, Dove. Dove in the pool. Salt water, dude. Why are you drinking salt water? Get, it, get out of there. Hey, fly away. Ah, oh, he's drinking salt water. Good. Salt water in the pool, you know? That. Eh, 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 eh. That's your California quail.
So here's the deal. Um, the garlic is very prominent. So is the pepper. And here's the funny thing. Vinegar is the number one ingredient. So you think it'd be super vinegar forward. It's not as vinegar forward as you think it would be. Um, the pepper really does a, a great job of, of kind of disguising that. Um, it's a beautiful animal though. Um, the lemon you pick, the lemon uh, extract you get on the finish, not up front. Um, but the garlic is very, very pronounced. It'd be great on pizza. This would be a great pizza sauce. It'd be great on tacos. It'd be versatile. Um, it's pretty hot. Uh, boy, they're really going, aren't they? This just sounds like a bird sanks right there. It's weird. I'll turn this camera off, and as I walk to go inside to upload, all these birds take off and they stop singing and just. But the minute the camera's on, they're like, we're safe, man. That cat, the red light's on. I can see the red light. They have good eyesight, and the birds. All right, uh, chili head. If you're, uh, if you're not a chili head, you wouldn't, you wouldn't like this, all right, at all. If you're a chili head, um, this should be a six or... Uh, uh, Probably be a seven and up. There'd be some that would say it's a six, but mostly it's gonna be a seven up. It's a hot sauce, it's a very hot sauce. But the flavor is good, the balance of salt is good. It's got a good lingering burn. Trinidad scorpion is a great pepper. All right, so thank you for K Johns. Uh, I got some cool statistics. The Australian slouch hat. This is sort of a slouch hat. If this were down on one side, all right. But it sort of looks Australian. The slouch hat um, has one side of the brim turned upward. And the reason is to aid in rifle maneuvering. The intention of turning up the right side was uh, of the hat was to ensure it would not get caught during the drill movement during the shoulder arms and order arms. That's what, one of those numbers. So you have a hat like that. If you hat down, it'd hit your rifle. Can't have that. Uh, oyster shells were uh, repurposed um, in the 1700s uh, in New York to build buildings, all right? Oysters in the 1700s were so overly abundant and so popular in New York City that discarded shells were repurposed into mortar paste to aid in New York's uh, building boom. All right. Uh, I'll read that. Hey, some of my, some, here's the deal. I'll take a picture of like 20 of them and I don't really read them all at the spot. Number one, it's fun to read in the moment, right? Um, so as I'm reading, I'm like, do I want to read that one? Because sometimes I'm going to read, I'm like, oh no, this is going to bring heat. So you know what I mean? I could kind of wing it on the spot. The asteroid that killed the dinosaurs did more than just punch a hole into the earth. After the impact, 70% of the world's forest burned. Tsunamis rose to a height of 300 feet. 25 trillion metric tons of debris was ejected into the atmosphere um, that reduced sunlight by up to 90% for a decade. And, and a year and a half ago, two years ago, we thought there was a big bang. We didn't realize that it was a multiple. So we think we know what we're talking about. We don't know what we're talking about. We really don't. We think we do. And, you know, it's really funny. Let's talk about that. The James Webb, Webb Space Telescope, all right? So before that, we had just the Hubble. So we, when we look in, through this telescope, we're looking back in time. We all know that by now. So we look back in time. It would only look back so far because it was a Hubble. It was still a killer telescope, but it can only look back so far. Well, when this James Webb Space Telescope, it could go back, uh, I don't know, 400,000 years after the supposed Big Bang. Well, it is looking at at that far back, right? 400,000 years after the Big Bang. And it finds, a, you know, f 10 or f half a dozen enormous, gigantic, incredibly fully formed, fully structured, and bizarrely huge uh, galaxies, like 10 times the size of the Milky Way, our galaxy. And there's no way they could have formed that in 400,000 years. We're talking about billions and billions of years. So the Big Bang didn't start then. So they think that it's multiple Big Bangs or something like that. 
but we talked with such arrogance that we know exactly how it happened. You know what I mean? So when I, when I read something like that about the asteroid, I'm like, mm, you know, take it with a grain of salt. So, now, other history you can, t you can kind of take. Let's do this one. A 13th. No, we don't want to read that one. That one's rough. I read that one already. Whew, it's a rough one. I did read it already, but. Ah, why not? This is kind of adult, but a 13th century judge was he was taking bribes and passing on an unfair sentence and got caught for it. So they took all of his skin. They removed it from him. Uh, obviously, this did him in. Uh, his name was Sesamnes. Uh, it was made into a leather chair and draped over the chair in which the next judge would sit. Um, that would remind every judge that sat in that chair of their judicial duties. And the next judge to sit in that chair was his son. You think he'd dot the I's and cross those T's, huh? Huh? Man, I would. Um, this one I had a Google last night. I did read this one. This is the one of the entire uh, group that I actually stopped and read it and Googled it because it was so interesting to me. Dishonored World War II servicemen are buried in a hidden cemetery plot. Chill out, dude. And at first when I read it, I'm like, really? So I, I read it. 94 U.S. World War II servicemen were ex executed by the United States military are buried in plot E. Excuse me. Of the Ois Ains American Cemetery in France. Hedges large hedges hide it from view and no no US flag is permitted to fly over it and all of the backs of the graves are turned toward the main part of the uh, of the uh, cemetery where everybody else is buried so they're turned away from it their backs are turned it's kind of so I googled it I was like is that true and it is and they all did terrible things I read you can google it and you can see their names what pl they have a number they have a number of what, like number 62 is this, you know, I read about what they did and what they got caught for. When I first read it, I thought, it's kind of harsh. Then I'm like, and then I read all the things they did. I'm like, no, not too harsh. The topic of the first ever radio communication on board an aircraft in a flight was a cat. All right, we'll say it again. The topic, the first conversation they ever had on an air uh, radio communication on an aircraft was about a cat. In 1910, Kiddo the Cat snuck on board an airship and ended up traveling with the airship during its entire 71-hour journey. Kiddo was then adopted by the daughter of one of the airmen. It's a pretty cool story. Uh, I'm only going to do two more of these things. We're going to wrap it up. Maybe we'll just do one more. We'll do one more. This is the last one we'll do. Uh, the first batteries ever created. The first batteries ever created. It was a big mosquito hop. Just kind of threw me off there. Uh, the first batteries ever created could be over 2,000 years old. And we still can't get a battery that works well. We're going to have for 2,000 years. We still can't get it. Uh, sorry. In 1938, 12 jars with copper cylinders and iron rods were found in Iraq. The jars, when combined with grape juice, produce approximately one volt of electricity. And you're like, well, what's, what's one volt? Man, if you had it attached to you all day long, you'd be bummed out at one volt, I promise you. Anywho, we're going to wrap it up now. I hope you guys have a great day. Um, I will be leaving shortly to, to go write this book. I'm going to actually, and I've been writing, working on it. It's just difficult with, you know, I, you know, I don't need a lot of distractions. I need very few. So uh, I, I am writing, but I'll be leaving soon to be writing this and uh, kind of excited about that. There's going to be a lot of ex really cool things coming up. It's going to be a busy few months. Uh, in the description box, you're going to see Cajuns. Please check them out. And remember, when you buy a bottle of this sauce, a portion goes to uh, New Mexico State University for research and education. All right, so check that sauce out. I think you'll like it. Right here, that's my son, Johnny Scoville Jr. Please check him out. Give him a follow right there. That is the lifeboat right here. All the challenges I've done since I started this ridiculous journey right there. Pepperology. All new people. I love you guys. I'm Johnny Scoville and this, this was Chase the Heat.